Today, we have something interesting happening in the world of, I guess, speculation, predictions. The world of Nintendo Switch is being kind of turned on its head, thanks to a group known as Citigroup. And Citigroup is an a, a, like a professional analytical group that tries to project what things are going to happen in the future. And they're correct on a lot of aspects, and they base it on insider information and what, and what they're hearing from people they know. Uh, and it was reported on by Bloomberg, so, you know, a, a, another pretty uh, well-respected publication. And essentially... It says this, that although the Nintendo Switch can be used as a handheld device, we think smaller children could struggle to use it comfortably in that format due to its size and weight, wrote the analyst. Accordingly, we think Nintendo will launch a lighter, dedicated handheld version of Switch, possibly, be, possibly to be called the Switch Mini. And it goes on to say that essentially, unlike the current Nintendo Switch, this would be just a dedicated uh, handheld. It would be smaller, and it would not work with a dock. You would not be able to hook it up to your TV. It's literally just a portable. The controllers on it would not be detachable, as an example, which they feel like is just a benefit of using it with a dock. Now, on the surface, this might not seem like such a bad idea. Uh, the Nintendo Switch is pretty big for a portable system. Yes, it's better if you take off the controllers, but reality is how many of us are really taking off the Joy-Cons when we take this thing portable not a lot, right? Because that's how you're going to play. You're going to attach the Joy-Cons to the side. Uh, especially, you know, because it, it might even help increase the battery life of the Nintendo Switch itself. I don't know. But th there's a thread on NeoGAF about the, the speculation surrounding the Nintendo Switch Mini. And uh, here's kind of the breakdown of it that, that makes it feel appealing at a consumer level. As for starters, you could have a sub $200 price point for the system. You wouldn't have the dock included. Uh, you know, you would have... The, the full joy cons so here's what they say it could have a four to five inch display uh you could have a full d-pad no dock included no joy cons included it's compat uh it, it could be compatible with a dock potentially compatible with the dock now it is notable that if if it is significantly smaller it's not going to fit in the dock right uh, I'm looking at, at a picture comparison now that I'll throw up in the video and there's no way in heck that device at that size would fit in the dock because the buttons and the nubs and everything would get in the way. And the thing is, is that Citigroup is saying that it shouldn't be compatible with the dock anyways. So even though this infograph says it could be compatible with the dock, let's just be honest, this device as it looks right here would not work with a dock. And they said it could be compatible with Joy-Cons. Obviously, uh, if it's a Switch, you can have more than just one set of Joy-Cons hooked up to a Switch. So you could have, you know, all the peripherals, like the, the Pro Control and all stuff that work with the current switch would obviously work with the switch mini you just would not have the ability to play it on a tv now the the idea here is obviously to create a more affordable more kid-friendly version of the switch and we'll even throw up a picture of some different colors here some people have mocked up and even a size comparison uh compared to the playstation vita which was a pretty beefy system in its own right for a portable device now there is two sides to a story here. Uh, for starters, calling this a Switch Mini is stupid to me. Because the whole concept of the Switch is the ability to switch. If you get rid of the switching ability, you can't really call it a Switch, right? Like, if you can't play it on your TV and on the go, then it's not a Switch. It's just a handheld device. It's a 3DS successor. But you can also understand the logic that the Switch isn't portable enough. And that's interesting, I suppose. But again, the, the Switch is portable enough for most people, uh, especially adults. Obviously, they're, they're talking about children here. And, uh, you know, I, if you have a case, right? Like, I have the Breath of the Wild Special Edition case. And if you bring that with and throw it in your backpack, your Switch is going to be just fine. So it's still portable, you're just not putting it in your pocket, right? It's not a Game Boy, it's not a Game Boy Pocket. It's not something that you would just, you know, qu quickly and easily just shove in your pocket and walk away with. But that's okay. I don't know that any device that has actual uh, joysticks on it is something I want to shove in my pocket anyways. 
Nintendo Switch Mini would still have actual joysticks, and that's not something that you should shove in a pocket. Just being honest, you're going to jam it. You're going to potentially break the sticks. Not worth the risk. So they're still not going to put this in their pocket. They're still going to have to put it in their backpacks. I, I just don't see the Switch Mini as something that actually needs to exist. Now, I understand the cheaper price point, but it's still going to have the same tech, right? And if you look at the breakdowns of the Nintendo Switch, there isn't a lot of room inside of that tablet, right? They have it pretty well filled up with the heat pipes and the GPU, and I don't know how they're going to fit that with the fan and everything into a smaller version um, by 2019. That doesn't mean that they can't. Obviously, there could be new processes. There's already new processes for the X1, so they could potentially make it smaller. Uh, maybe make a new version that's an X2, but it's like down clock, so it matches the original Nintendo Switch specs. I don't know, but I, I can see how this could be a possible. I could see a market for it. I could also see why it's a completely stupid idea. Uh, to me, it's kind of like when they called the Wii U what it was. A Wii U sounded like a peripheral for the Wii. And Nintendo Switch Mini just sounds like, oh, it's a smaller Nintendo Switch. So, yeah, but it doesn't come with a dock, but I can still use it with the dock I have, right? No! Like, no, you can't. That, that That's the whole point. This to, to get rid of the main function that makes this thing a Switch baffles me. Now, that doesn't mean they shouldn't come out with something. And I don't know what that something should be. Because... I could see having a smaller device for kids that plays the same games as the Nintendo Switch. So you could just pop those cartridges in there and it works. But I just don't know how you can call it a Nintendo Switch. And I don't know how marketing-wise you could call it something else. Like, oh, this is, say, a 4DS. Or this is, because you want to get rid of the DS and go with the single screen. You know, this is the new Game Boy. And be like, yeah, what games does the Game Boy play? Nintendo Switch games. That, I mean, that's a confusing marketing you know, experience as well. So, you know, I guess if I have to go with my gut reaction, the Nintendo Switch Mini shouldn't exist, and it's a stupid idea. But I could see some merits behind it, why it might be appealing to children, especially trying to get that cheaper price point, just like they did with the 2DS. I can see why, yeah, you take away the 3D, that, you know, it is what it is, but kids, you know, little kids can't have 3D anyways. So it made sense. In this case, I don't know if I see a logical point to it, when you got physical, as I said, you got physical sticks like that, you're not some, it's not something you're sticking in your pocket anyways. And if you're not sticking it in your pocket, I think the Nintendo Switch as is is already going to be just as portable as the Nintendo Switch Mini is, making the Nintendo Switch Mini completely pointless beyond getting a cheaper system out on the market. Plus, you know, it, it is going to be hard to necessarily make games that are designed for Joy-Cons because every consumer has them and then have the Mini out on the market that doesn't have Joy-Cons and all of a sudden these games that need the Joy-Cons, say like a snipper clips, that functionality is gone. The ability to plop the system down and take take the two off and have two different people playing, that's gone. Like you lose too much functionality, I think, with the Nintendo Switch Mini. That's why I think Citigroup is way off base with their projection there's going to be a Nintendo Switch Mini. Now, I can see why 2019 Nintendo's talking about a Nintendo Switch 2. You know, if they start treating this like a smartphone market, uh, they could be like, hey, look, you know, Nintendo Switch games are all going to be c compatible with Nintendo Switch 2. And we're just going to keep making iterations like that, kind of like the other console makers have done with the Xbox One S, the Xbox Scorpio, the PlayStation 4 Pro, even the PlayStation Slim, although that's not really much of an improvement over the original PlayStation 4. I, I just think that the Mini is not the direction we're going to see. We're going to see more iterative consoles. And Nintendo has really hit something here. They, they found a market with Switch right now. And I think if you take away that main functionality of it, you split up your market, you end up not catering to as many consumers as you want, you end up confusing the marketplace, and Nintendo already did this with Wii U, I don't see them making that same mistake twice. Anyways, this is Nathaniel Ruffle Jance from Nintendo Prime, signing out.